Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be discussing on the topic simple classification of substances and we are going to be separating uh, liquid liquid mixtures. Uh, previously we talked about uh, separation of liquid solid mixtures so today our main focus will be liquid liquid mixtures. So we are going to look at three ways of separating liquid-liquid mixtures and we are going to be discussing specifically separation of immiscible liquid-liquid mixtures. These are mixtures that do not mix and we will use the a separating panel and then we will do decantation and then we will use a dropper and then we are going to later on look at one question and see if we have understood what we have discussed. So when let's look at the liquid-liquid mixture. So I showed two types of liquid-liquid mixtures. We have immiscible liquids and we have um, miscible liquids. For the immiscible liquids, they do not actually mix. Uh, they form layers. And then for uh, an example is oil and water. That's a very common example. And also we have kerosene and, and water. So if you add like oil in water, you notice that it's going to form layers. So we are going to call that mixture immiscible. It's not mixing. And then we have the miscible liquids where they form one layer or we say they are homogeneous in nature. So for example, if you mix water and ethanol, you're going to form one layer or one um, uh, uniform mixture. And also if you mix water and milk, especially when you're making tea, you notice it forms one layer. It doesn't form different layers. So we say it is homogeneous. Those are just examples of miscible liquids. So today we are going to concentrate on separating immiscible liquids. And later on in another lesson, you are going to look at separation of miscible liquids. So immiscible liquids can be separated by three methods. Method number one, we can use a separating panel, uh, we can use a dropper, and we can use a decantation. So we are going to discuss these three ways of separating immiscible liquids, and then we are going to come up with a conclusion on which is the best method among us those three. So we will continue with use of a separating panel. So we are going to use an example of a mixture that is kerosene and water. Uh, we can separate that using a separating panel. So let's look at how a separating panel looks like. So you remember this separating panel was mentioned when we were looking at apparatus in topic one. So what you do, the mixture of kerosene and water is poured into this um, separating panel. After it's poured in the separating panel, uh, the, the solution is uh, let to stand for a few minutes uh, or sit for a few minutes and then after those few minutes two layers usually form and those two layers we have the top layer and the bottom layer and then we you can you notice in a separating panel we have the glass topper which, are, which is a bit different from other panels uh, which you are going to you, you discussed when you are learning about apparatus. So, and then the tap is opened. When the tap is opened, the bottom layer is removed. And then after some time, we get to a point where we have an interface. There's a, a, a layer referred to as interface. This layer is a mixture of both kerosene and water. So after the tap is opened to remove the bottom layer in a beaker, we remove this beaker and we replace it with another beaker, which is going to remove the interface layer. And then we also get another third beaker, which is going to remove now the final layer. So when it comes to use of a separating panel, we know that in a separating panel, the one that uh, the, the one that is lighter is the one that uh, floats, and the one that is heavy is the one that goes at the bottom. So we have already talked about opening the tap, and then the bottom layer is going to flow out. And then after some time, uh, you get another beaker and discuss the interface. So this is the boundary between the water and the kerosene. And then finally, you get another beaker and you put the top layer. So when you look at like what, what are some of the things that happened in the experiment, 
So one of the things you notice is that uh, kerosene will float on water because it is lighter. It is important to remember this property of kerosene that makes it to uh, float on water. And then the interface is usually a mixture. We've talked about the interface is a mixture of water and kerosene. And it is usually discarded because it's not possible for us to, to separate these two liquids using a separating panel again. Uh, in this case, that's why we throw it away. So the mixture of water is usually immiscible. And you notice they have two different densities. And when you talk about densities, we are talking also about lightness and heaviness. So you notice kerosene is lighter, so it goes at the top. And then water is heavier, it becomes at the bottom. So we we'll look at the next two other methods that I used to separate these uh, two uh, solutions or two immiscible solutions. So we talked about initially mentioning of decantation and use of uh, a pipette so decantation is never actually that efficient we mentioned decantation again when we were mixing solid and liquids which are immiscible and still we said it's not efficient even in that uh, process so for example in our case if we use paraffin and water you notice paraffin is going to be on the top because it is uh, less dense and water is going to be at the bottom because it is denser or the paraffin is lighter, water is heavier. So if we use decantation, we allow the mixture to sit for some time, and then we discard the top layer in another beaker. Although you notice this method is not that efficient because you're not going to be able to remove the interface or some of the water may pass or both water and paraffin might be left in the beaker. Another alternative is a dropper. So what you do, you pick a dropper and you pick, um, you suck the top layer. For example, if you are using the example of paraffin and water, so basically you bring a dropper and pick the top layer and place it in another beaker. So this process might be better than decantation, but it takes a lot of time. It's time wasting. So imagine, uh, uh, separating a very large amount of mixture uh, in large scale. It's not possible for us to use this method. But in small scale, you can be able to separate this one. It's a bit more uh, better than the decantation method that we have, we have just discussed. So next, you're going to look at one question in regards to what you have discussed so that we can be able to remember the content. So the question that we are going to discuss is, the apparatus below was used to separate a mixture of liquid A and B. So we have this apparatus, you can see it has two layers, there's layer A and layer B, and then uh, set two properties of the liquid that makes it possible to separate them using such an apparatus. So first of all, the apparatus that we are using is, use of, is a separating panel a separating panel and for separating panel there are two properties that we consider when you are separating uh, immiscible liquids in the separating panel we look at the density that's why we say the one that is the top is lighter and the one that is on the bottom is heavier and then another property we consider is miscibility. These two solutions must not mix. If they mix, we cannot use this method. So we have density and miscibility. And then give the name of the above apparatus. You've already given the name. It is a separating panel. And the two properties is density and miscibility. So that brings us to the end of the uh, subtopic. So make sure you are able to, to use this method. And the most uh, appropriate method is a separating panel. And it is important to remember that it's possible because these solutions have different densities and because they are immiscible, they do not mix. So see you in the next session.